I don't clean my bikes very often, but when I do it, it feels good. Oh yeah! Hey guys, how's it going? Tua Cruz here, and welcome back to the channel. We're here today with... Nana-chan, my beautiful steel single speed. If you watched one of my recent videos, you noticed that all of my bikes are breaking, all of my main commuting bikes are breaking, and I'm finally getting into repair mode. This bike actually broke down almost two months ago now. It's mid-December right now, and it's about time we're gonna get her fixed, so that's what we're gonna do in today's video. A lot of you guys have asked for more mechanic videos, and I've mentioned time and time again that I'm a horrible bike mechanic, but here we go, we're gonna go through this together. I finally got all my parts ready, I, at least I think I got all my parts ready, so the most important one, of course, is you see the rear wheel is missing right here, so actually, here is my old wheel, still with uh, all the old parts still on here, and the reason that this needed to be repaired is you can see the chain is still stuck behind the sprocket here and that got damaged, the spokes got damaged, the hub got a little bit damaged. So I can't use this wheel anymore and that's why I needed to get a new wheel. This side though, this is a free wheel. The other side is a fixed gear and I think I can still use this. I'm gonna try and take it off but I actually don't know the tool to take it off because I've never had to take one of these off before but we're gonna do that another day. Anyway, I am gonna scrap the tires off of this though so we are gonna use that. The rest of it we're mainly gonna scrap. These are nice yellow rims that match my bike. Unfortunately, my new rims aren't yellow. Anyway, here we go. This is what we got. So I ordered this off of Chain Reaction Cyclist for about $100, including shipping to Japan, which isn't too bad. It's about what I was expecting to pay for a cheaper end kind of wheel. So what is this? This is the Halo Aero Trek rear wheel. And thankfully, they were just selling the rear wheel. I didn't want to pay for a full set when I can still use the front. Anyway, it came in this box. Let's take a look at it real quick. Here we go, nice black solid rim. And here's the decal here, aero track. So that looks pretty cool. Uh, black hub, black spokes, black rim. Looks pretty nice, stealthy. And yep, we got our, we got the right kind of wheel. That's a good sign. And this one didn't come with any gears or anything. So that was an extra part I had to get. Fortunately, I had an extra gear lying around from when I bought my state bicycle single speed a couple years ago. They actually stocked my bike with the wrong size cog, so I got an extra of one I didn't need. This is a 16 tooth. On my old setup, I actually had an 18, which seems to be pretty rare. I tried looking for it and I couldn't really find any that were available right away, so I am gonna gear up to a 16 from an 18, which is a little bit heavier of a gear. I think originally this was set up with a 48 18, which is a pretty nice low gear, so I was spinning a lot, and I really like that gear. But, so this is gonna feel a little bit heavier, I think. Uh, there's a whole, I made a whole gear chart actually for calculating gears, but I still don't know how to calculate gears on my own without it. So uh, you can go check it out. It's one of the sites that I manage. So we're going with the 16 tooth gear. And fortunately, I also had a couple extra lock rings lying around as well. I'm kind of like a retired track rider. I have all the track equipment, but I never use it because you can't really get on the tracks that often here in Japan and just busy with work. And I've got my other track bike uh, right over there, the state bikes one, which unfortunately isn't getting much use. So we got that. Another important piece of the puzzle is a new chain. So we got a nice gold KMC single speed chain. This one I'm pretty excited about. Gold match the yellow. And yeah, this isn't related to this video, but my other bike that needs repairing over here, Suika-chan, I've got a couple parts coming in for her. So we'll be having another video in the near future for her new wheel. So her new wheels are on the way. I got some new disc rotors and disc pads. And another thing to be really excited about is I've got some awesome new Tannis airless tires. So we're going to make a whole review video for this once everything is ready to go with that build. So look forward to that upcoming mechanic video. Maybe we'll make this a series mechanic Monday or something like that. And we've also got our necessary 15 millimeter wrench to get the wheel on as well as a chain breaker. I think that's going to be all the tools that we need. So let's get started. First things first, let's get the new wheel ready. Let's get the new gear on and let's get the new tire on or not new tire on. Let's get the old tire switched over and yeah, let's get started. Got my Swiss knife here. Let's get this cog out of here. Should use some scissors for this instead, but it works. There we go. Nice dusty gear. This thing's just been sitting around for a while. And I haven't done this in a long time, but this shouldn't be too difficult. Just the longer side on the inside and just screw it on. And this goes the direction that you pedal. So clockwise, just screws on like that. There we go. Good to go. Step one down. And we should tighten this down a little bit with the chain whip. So I gotta thank past crews for buying all these tools that I never use, but it's good to have them around when 
Even if you don't use them, it's nice to have them around for when you actually do need them. Here we go, this one's got my name on it. So for those of you who've never used a chain whip before, it's pretty easy, especially on a single speed. Just wrap it around like that and put some pressure on it and that'll tighten it down. It's about all you need. This thing will naturally get tightened as you use it. Next, we're gonna put a lock ring on. Some people are pretty crazy daredevils and don't put a lock ring on. I recommend you definitely put a lock ring on, especially if you're not riding with brakes. You don't wanna not be able to stop when you're riding on the road. And this is a pretty nice, simple, but ingenious system. So the cog here goes the one direction clockwise. The lock ring here goes the opposite direction. So you thread it the opposite way counterclockwise. So that way, if the gear is going the opposite direction, so you're back pedaling, you're braking, that's not gonna come loose. And this is one tool I actually don't have. I don't have a lock ring tool, sadly, but I think this will be all right for just getting it on for now. I'll stop by a bike shop and ask and see if they'll let me borrow one of their parts just to tighten this, but it should be okay with just hand strengthening for this part for right now anyway. All right, hurdle one cleared. We've got our gear on. Next part, let's get the tire swapped over from the old bike. So if you watched my recent video where me and my wife tried fixing a flat tire, eh, it wasn't the prettiest of videos, but hopefully this time will go a little bit smoother. So first things first, we gotta get the air out of this tire. And the tires I'm using on here are Schwalbe Marathons. These tires are bomb proof. I have two favorite road tires for road commuting. And one is the Schwalbe Marathons, which I have on here. The other is the Continental Gator Skins. The Gator Skins are great for longer rides and more kind of like race style riding. So fast pace, it has better rolling resistance. And these ones have a little bit more grip and I feel are a little bit more solid and they can run lower pressure. They also have a nice reflective band on the side, so they're great for commuting. I've used these tires for over four years, like I've changed them out every year and a half or so, and I've never gotten a single flat on them. I've ridden them down to the ground. I made a whole separate video about my recommended tires, you can check it out. But anyway, thumbs up if you're a Schwalbe Marathon user. I know a lot of people mentioned also that the Marathon Plus is also a really nice tire. I've never had to use that one, I'm, I've been really good with just the regular marathons. I've never had a single problem. So these are still in good condition. It looks like we're going to pop these over because tires aren't the most expensive or cheapest item, but it's good to get as much use out of them as you can. So let's pop these off. My hands are already getting dirty. There we go. Getting them off is always the easier part. It's getting them on. That's the trick. Goodbye, beautiful yellow rims and hello, black beauty. So first things first, I want to check the, the tire and the tube, just make sure everything's clean. There's no extra dust and debris in there. We're gonna double check everything. Make sure everything's good to go. In case you're interested, here's a closer view of the tread pattern that's on these Marathon tires. So a little bit different than a standard smooth tire. We've got some tread pattern here. Let's put this on. You should double check the rotation. Uh, that's one thing I haven't had too big of a problem with with the rotating hubs. I've, I've ridden these both directions and it's worked fine for me. So. Oh, this is funny. I just noticed on the sidewall of this tire, you can see some of the yellow paint from the wheel seems to have rubbed off on here, but that should be okay. That shouldn't cause any problems. That's just from hooking onto the inside of the rim. That'll just come right off. So that's not a problem. Another trick I like to do, and I know a lot of people do this, is they line up the logo of the tire with the logo of the rim. So that way, in case you ever get a flat or anything, you can easily trace back to where it was because you know exactly where your tire was positioned on your rim. So let's get the one side on, easy peasy. Find the hole and let's get the two back in here. So changing flats is something that I feel you get a lot better with, with practice. And if there's one downside to having really puncture proof tires is you never have to deal with flat tires. So you don't really change tires that often and you get a little bit weaker or a little bit rusty. I was definitely much better at changing tires and flats back when I had to do it pretty regularly. I know, I know, excuses, excuses. This one seems to be going on nice and easy though. My thumbs appreciate it. Oh, there we go. Wow, these went on like super easy. So there's another good point to these tires, the Marathons over the Gator Skins, is the Marathons go on really easy, I find, compared to the Gator Skins, which I really have to struggle to get on. So if you're looking for a low maintenance, easy to work with commuting tire, I'd have to ease out the Marathons a little bit over the Gator Skins. Oh, can't forget this little guy. Let's lock down the valve in here, get some air in here. And yes, my pump is also yellow. And that's that. We've got our new wheel here, ready to go. Gears on, locked on, tires on. 
the last thing to do is put the wheel on and the chain. We can't forget about the chain. So before we put the chain on, it's actually some parts of this bike are still a little bit dirty from riding in the elements and all the rain. I, I put this bike through a lot. This is my rain bike. So there's some dirtiness we got to get rid of on the front chain ring and the back area of this bike. So we'll clean that out right now before we get the new wheel on. To help me out, I've got some nice degreaser I bought also from Chain Reaction Cyclist a couple years ago. So this stuff has lasted me a long time. Actually, when I bought this, it did come with the top cap. And so I complained and they sent me another one and I requested the top cap and so they sent me another one. So I got another one here that I've never used and it also didn't come with the top cap. But the weird thing is with these is they're slightly different color. Can you see here? So one looks a little bit more orange. One looks a little bit more green. They're supposedly the same thing. What is this? Crankalicious Lemon Velo. They're different colors. So I'm guessing one's older than the others, but it works, but I don't have the spray nozzle. So I don't really have a good way to get this out. I just dab it in a towel though. So we're going to use this to degrease, get some of the gunk off the, the front chain ring. And one of the biggest parts I'm going to struggle with today, I think is putting on a new chain. I haven't cut my own chain and put my own chain on a bike in years. So this is something I'm going to have to YouTube, I think really quick before we do it, but I think we can do it. Yeah. Pro mechanic tips with Cruz. So let's take a quick look before we start. You can see here's some of the nastiness on this chain ring right now. So what do you guys think? Is this a little bit too sharp? Does the front chain ring need some replacing as well? We're not going to do that today though, but maybe we'll save that for another day. I like this. This is another cool thing I just noticed right now is this is kind of like the American Schwinn logo. That's pretty cool. Quality build for over 110 years. There's the dropouts. And you can see this other side here is a little bit more nasty. We've got more of the sand. So I commute every day along a river path and the river path often floods. I actually rode this through the flood uh, a couple of days before this broke. So yeah, there's still some residue from the river there. And let's get this all cleaned up as best we can before we get started. Another thing I should point out is I've got my sort of cleaning maintenance tarp down here on the ground. So everything that drips from up here down to the ground, it's going to protect the apartment so I can get some of my security deposit back, hopefully when I eventually leave this place. So let's get started. We've got a nice brand new clean white towel here. Let's see how dirty this gets just from cleaning this section. I'm not sure how you supposed to shake this. I'm going to shake it anyway. So let's dab this in here. I think that should be good enough to start and let's go to town. Oh yeah. I don't clean my bikes very often, but when I do it, it feels good. Degreaser, get all this gunk off, make it shine. There we go. See that beautiful white rag. Let's also get the other side. Oh, this works. This is the easy way. I can hear a bunch of pieces drop into the floor. <laughs> that's a good sign. All the big dirty clumps are dropping. All right. That's probably good enough. What do you think? Not too bad. And now we move on to the biggest challenge for today, the chain. So I actually think I'm okay with cutting this and putting this back together. The biggest part I'm concerned about is getting the right length. I've never really had to measure that myself. I'd always base it off of my old chains. I can't really do that in this situation. Also my gear situation is changing it. So we're just gonna have to wing it. Check this beautiful bad boy out though. Beautiful gold chain. And we've got our connector here. First things first though, let's try putting the wheel on the bike. This is going to feel good. As much as I love this bike room, it's very small, tiny Japanese apartments. There we go. Wheels on. So I'm using a 16 on here. There's a chance I might go up to a bigger gear. So a lighter gear up to an 18, in which case I would need more space and let's get the wheel somewhat straight and I'm just going to hand tighten it for right now. Oh yeah. And let's put this bad boy on real quick. Let's see how it lines up. First, let's get the chain straight. This is my first gold chain, so I'm really excited. Put this through here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we got all this excess chain right here. So this is the tricky part, deciding where we cut this. This seems to be about the magic point. We did it. All right, guys, unfortunately, I didn't film the process of me cutting the chain, but I guarantee you I did it all by myself with a little bit of help from YouTube. The guys at Park Tool, their video was a great help. So I'll link that down below as well in case you're interested. It was really helpful, really useful. But anyway, the chain's connected, it's on. As you can see, I haven't done anything with the tension yet. So that's the next step and hopefully 
crossing my fingers, that's gonna be the last step and then Nanachan will be ready to get back out on the roads just in time for a rainy morning tomorrow, so. But anyway, let's finish the last step and get this bad boy tensioned. I actually don't use any chain tensioner tools. Those are really useful and probably a good idea to get one of those, but I generally can do it by feel. The reason I'm in this mess in the first place is not because I couldn't tension the bike, but because I wasn't checking it. I just left it for over a month. I left it probably, actually probably multiple months to be honest and entirely my fault. So not a problem as long as you're maintaining it, but the good thing about those tensioners is they generally keep it in place so you don't have to worry about it loosening. So that is an advantage of getting chain tensioners might have to invest in getting some of those on this bike, but anyway, we've just got our 15 millimeter wrench and we're just gonna use this to do the job. This brings me back to my good old track days, so pull the wheel back as far as we can get it, and this looks pretty good. Then we're gonna tighten it down, a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. Make sure the wheel is true. And we'll just go a little bit by a little bit Oh, there we go. This is looking solid. We got some decent chain tension and let's tighten this bad boy down. Here's the test. Oh! Tun-chan! Nana-chan, how did you get it? Yes. Yes. Look Wow! It's good. It's good, right? It's good, Cruise Tensai! Cruise is good! I'm going to go to the So I introduced her to bathrobe culture. <laughs> so this was my bathrobe. I introduced her to it one day, and since then she hasn't given it back. So she's got normal clothes on underneath, but she just wears the bathrobe to stay warm. It's winter here in Japan. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 Oh. So here I was just feeling all accomplished and everything and I just realized I made not really a fatal mistake but a pretty big mistake. If you see the position of this dropout when everything is tensioned here, it's on the very end on the inside so I don't think I have enough wiggle room with this chain to put on a larger gear but assuming that this gear is okay, there's no problems with it, that should be no problem. But in the case that I do end up wanting to put a bigger gear on this, looks like I might have to get another chain, which is a bit unfortunate. But the good thing about single speeds is the chains are only like 10 or 15 bucks. So it could be a pricier mistake. Not a bad first try after a couple of years, I would say. And I think we're just going to go ahead and test this out on tomorrow's commute. So hopefully there's no problems. I don't want to be late for work. But anyway, let's check back in tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. Just my luck would have it. It's nice and wet this morning. So we're gonna have a good first test back with the rain bike. Nanachan, back in action. So when you ride, it's not the rain that sucks, it's the puddles that suck, but luckily we got a little fender set on the back, so we should be good. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you wanna see more bike mechanic videos with my horrible skills, be sure to give this video a like, comment down below, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Let's enjoy the rest of the ride. See you guys.